All right, so the second Dragon Ball Super Broly movie has dropped, uh, and it has dropped to a lot of controversy in the community because it does pretty much officially establish that Dragon Ball Minus uh, is going to be, like, you know, kind of officially introduced into the sort of, you know, I, I hate to use the word canon, but at least, you know, this whole story where we followed, you know, from the you know, original Dragon Ball to the Saiyan Saga, you know, all the way to the Buu Saga, and then going into Battle of Gods and into Dragon Ball Super. Uh, now this Dragon Ball Minus is actually going to be adapted and is, I would say, very likely to be the first uh, 20 minutes or so of the Broly movie because uh, we did see a recent interview uh, with some of the cats that are working on the movie uh, and it was mentioned that the first 20 minutes would be, uh, like, very like it'd have a very sad sort of tone to it so i think it's a very safe bet that we're gonna see pretty much all of uh, dragon ball minus adapted throughout those first 20 minutes now minus itself i feel like it does kind of get more of a reputation as being bad than it actually is it is very very short it's just it it sort of creates some continuity issues with stuff that is from the original manga, by the way. Not just like, you know, anime filler scenes that were added in or anything by Toei. But, you know, with the official manga, it changes some things slightly. You know, Goku was stated to be a baby in the manga several times when he arrived on Earth. But Dragon Ball Minus sort of changes that up so that uh, Goku is actually a couple years old. I believe about three years old uh, when he will arrive on Earth now instead of being an actual baby. Like, there was some confusion uh, with, I think, the fandom, especially with this new trailer coming out, where uh, we see both Goku and Vegeta in sort of incubation capsules. And I think people are sort of assuming that, like, now they're kind of retconning that Goku and Vegeta are the same age. I don't really think that's the case. I still think, I think there will probably be about that same age gap of four to five years between uh, Goku and Vegeta. Like, we also do get a shot of Broly, so Broly definitely does appear at least to be a similar age to both Goku and Vegeta. Another big issue I know that a lot of people have is Dragon Ball Minus's depiction of Bardock. Whereas, if you guys remember from sort of the TV anime special, we see that, you know, Bardock, you know, along with the rest of the Saiyans are, you know, basically, you know, the villains. Like, they're just straight up villains. Like, the Saiyans were said to be ruthless, you know, thirsty for fighting and destruction and all that shit. And uh, we do see, you know, Bardock and his team sort of take down, like, you know, planets, right? And then Bardock is basically hit with that uh, attack on the one planet, and then he is given the ability to sort of see into the future, now, and then at that point, he kind of, uh, you know, challenges Frieza, who's about to destroy planet Vegeta. And then, like, you know, at his death, at the hands of Frieza, like, in space, kind of, you know, le like, leading a rebellion or a charge against Frieza. Like, he gets that final vision of Goku facing off with Frieza uh, on planet Namek. And, like, that's such, a, that's such an iconic thing to people, to that whole scene, like... You know, Bardock has Taurus bandana, which was originally white, but it's it's now red because it's covered in Taurus blood after uh, Bardock's whole crew was wiped out by Dodoria and some, you know, other Frieza henchmen. So now, like, in Dragon Ball Minus, we're not really shown explicitly that that's not the way things happen, but in the trailer... Uh, we do indeed see Frieza sort of firing off, you know, his that traditional supernova attack at planet Vegeta. But there is no sign of all of the other soldiers that were originally there when Bardock made his storm on Frieza. There's no sign of Bardock being there either. So I know a lot of people are probably going to have a big issue with that. I mean, once the movie actually drops, we'll see what happens. I'm going to tell you all now, I would not be shocked. Like... They're going to this length to bring Bardock back now in this capacity. <laughs> I would not be surprised if they somehow went the route of the Bar like the other Bardock special where he, you know, gets sent back in time and becomes a Super Saiyan. Or look at, you know, all the Dragon Ball video game stuff like Heroes where he becomes a mass Saiyan. Like, let me tell you all right now. Would you really be that shocked if we found out like, either the next movie after the Broly movie, or, you know, a continuation of the TV anime, 
all of a sudden the mass saiyan shows up and like that's the next villain would that be that surprising you know to have bardock take this role after this movie i would say no I, that's right up the alley of what modern dragon ball has done sort of established you know bringing these major characters back you know having new transformations in a way that they could sell to the video games that they could sell to toys cards action figures everything so i would not be shocked if this whole dragon ball minus being brought in bardock not being there to face off with frieza as frieza's destroying planet vegeta this really could lead into bardock appearing in like the current age like and actually meeting with goku or vegeta or whatever or being a villain something along those lines it, it just would not shock me in what in any way whatsoever now speaking of frieza um i've seen also a lot of people have trouble like they don't really like the the new sort of redesign that frieza's first form has uh in the trailer i don't really care this is something i don't really care too much about uh i mean we see you know frieza has more of a pinkish like color to him but that's exactly the way that uh frieza i guess it was colored in the manga right like we've sort of had this issue before where look at trunks like when trunks came back in dragon ball super you know he had the blue hair and it was sort of like established that like he had you know the blue hair uh, like the whole time like when bulma first you know sees that the time machine arrives she asks you know kid trunks like does the young man in there have blue hair like it's meant that he had blue hair the whole time like it's just these small little retcons or even like the patara earrings right all of a sudden now they have this timer on them which they did not have in dragon ball z back in the day so they're gonna change little things like that i, I don't really think it's too much of an issue i mean frieza like we've already seen his final form fighting broly in the previous trailer and he looks exactly the same there so i could care less right like frieza's final form looks the same golden frieza is gonna look the same i'm totally cool with that now, another reason I'm also not too surprised, I guess, that they are going to officially uh, kind of establish Dragon Ball Minus, you know, in this anime or in the, in the movie is Frieza does specifically mention Super Saiyan God uh, in Dragon Ball Minus. So Frieza is aware of that. It's not too much of a stretch to me that uh, Frieza might have learned about Super Saiyan God from Beerus. So Beerus really could have a role uh, early in this movie or towards the end of the movie where it's revealed Beerus has had some hand uh, in the destruction of planet Vegeta and in the annihilation of the Saiyans. Uh, I, I really would not be shocked. There's been, uh, I think, big time hints towards that already about Beerus's involvement in the eradication of the Saiyans. So that could become a major plot point. I actually think that could, that could be very interesting uh, if that is brought up. Like, that, uh, that at least would... I think that alone would make Dragon Ball Minus worth it. If, like, you know, Frieza, like, what sort of gets his mind going towards the process of destroying the Saiyans was this Super Saiyan God legend. Because when Beerus first wakes up in Dragon Ball Super, I think he, he did mention that he did want the Saiyans eradicated. So that stuff would all make sense to me. And, of course, the last big thing is we do finally get to see Goku's mother uh, introduced officially into, you know, kind of like the, the anime and stuff. We'll see exactly how they handle her. Uh, I think it, it'll be kind of interesting to see her. I, I would say if Bardock is going to survive, it, it would be very strange, too, if, like, they would make a... How do you say it? Gine or Gine? Whichever way that you say it. Like, if they have her come back at some point... That could be, like, very, very wonky for stuff. I don't think it's going to happen, but, like, you know, we have seen, like, female Saiyan, like, Super Saiyans now, Khalifa and Kale. So, could Goku's mother sh pop up as a Super Saiyan? I mean, again, like, <laughs> wonkier things have happened. I know people lost their minds when they heard that the next arc of Dragon Ball Super was going to be a, like, Goku Black, a villain. Like, like it just... Goku Black, evil Goku, was a, like a real thing. People were losing it. So, like, I'm sure there's crazier things they can do. A lot of this stuff, I'm not really going to trip too much. I actually want to wait and see the movie before I see it. Like, I, I don't really think Dragon Ball Minus will cause too many issues. If they're going to use it, like, in two major way, ways. One, to establish Beerus' presence, you know, 
uh, as part of the Saiyans' destruction. And two, if they're going to try and bring Bardock into, like, you know, the present time. Those are the two things I'm interested to see if they are going to take that uh, sort of route with it. So let me know what y'all think of all the Dragon Ball Minus stuff that we got going on. Did you like the second movie trailer or what? Let me know. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch y'all next time.